Smello, everyone, and smappy day to you. Day, too easy to stay to you. Too Easy Tuesday, it's Mind Under Matter. Ramin just one up me once again. I sent Ramin a text. I was like, Ramin just got back from Austin. He was doing a, a mural and everything, finishing a second mural at Cap City Comedy Club. It's a, I got a, a sneak preview of it, it's amazing. And, uh, and so, I sent a joked text while he was in, I was like, hey, um, tomorrow's octopus day, so wear your scuba gear. Not thinking that he was actually going, did you buy those goggles? Of course I was going to. <laughs> of course I was going to wear scuba gear. And actually without the goggles, it kind of looks like I'm in Fire Island or something. Dressed like Fire <laughs> Island. Have you seen the new smash hit movie, Fire Island? No. I didn't even it's know Joel that was Kim a movie. Booster and Bowen Yang's, uh, or I think it's Joel Kim Booster's movie, but Bowen Yang is also in it. But it's about that gay island where people go for summer and party. But it's a super cool story, hmm. and good, uh, good everything. But just I don't know why I felt like that because maybe it's just a lot of shirtless guys and tank tops. Yeah, yeah. I haven't, I haven't watched uh, TV since I've left Wisconsin. So that's been two weeks now and I wasn't, I didn't watch much TV in like the month of May. So I'm, I'm a little out of touch. So where do you get mediocre Star Trek and Star Wars? (laughs) You just imagine mediocre Star Wars in your head? Yeah, I just imagine it. I don't know what I would do without mediocre Star Wars that I watch (laughs) with just mostly plot holes, mostly plot armor and plot holes. And I still watch it. (laughs) <laughs> just for the like five minutes of like that's a cool scene yeah and then um, the rest of the story around it is just pure who cares <laughs> um so here's why we're talking about octopus i uh, i we've been talking about uh space uh, mom space station stuff and it always has me it i i always think um, you know, we've said this a few times on the show before, and I used to joke about this and stand up and stuff, but, uh, but the idea that people are just so obsessed with space and aliens and star Wars and that sort of thing. And there's like a whole ocean. That's most of the earth that has, I think there's something like, uh, I think there's something like. 150 million species in the ocean that have been have been identified but they think there's about a billion species in the ocean how do you get a number like that that's a good that's a really good question how do you get the number of we think there's this amount missing and i get with space and like gravitational stuff you can do that but how do you guess that with with ocean yeah, I think you go into area, see how many new species you find, map how much more ocean there is, you know, that sort of thing. And then and then oh, there's like okay. there's DNA evidence as well. So so you can like um I I was just talking with a paleontologist on on here we are and um with with DNA testing or with with genes you can Part of the reason why they're now able to accurately say like uh, humans and octopus uh, most recent common ancestor was 600 million years ago is because they can look at our DNA and genetic codes and and look at there's like genetic drift and and they can estimate the ways in which it would have taken for for like certain things to change in the code. Mm. And so sometimes there's like like in humans. They know that we have um, like anyone that's European or Asian has something like 12, uh, usually around like 12 percent Neanderthal genes um, in them. And there's there's I didn't know about the Asians. Mm -hmm. I didn't know Asians had more of it, too. So black people have the least Neanderthal DNA. Depends on the black people. There was there. So there was a lot. There was a large area of 
of Africa where the, where people started branching um uh branching off and I don't know when they started bumping into the, the Neanderthals. So there's so there's a there's a segment of uh there's like a significant segment of Africans that are more closely related to um uh, like Europeans and Asians uh, genetically than they are to other Africans that are like that were way f- further down in, in ah. Africa because it started off as the big like the cradle of Pangea. life they call it um yeah it was long after Pangea humans a- arrived but um but the the kind of cradle that would of have life. been fun for people to just yell at like have racism back there and just everyone yelling at everyone else to go back to Pangea. Go I am back in Pangea. To Pangea. Oh right. <laughs> <laughs> well, just walk around it some more. Then you walk around it some more. <laughs> oh, there's no borders. I that's funny. Um. And so, so anyhow, you can, they, they know from looking at human DNA that there was some other, so humans fucked like other species, like basically. Oh yeah, we uh, did. Uh, other, other, well, we, we inter, <laughs> we interbred with. Back in the golden Neanderthal, age. <laughs> yeah. With Neanderthals <laughs> and some other lineages of, of homo, uh, like, and, um, I don't remember. I don't remember a couple of the other ones, but there's there's some in there where they're like, where is this DNA coming from? Homo erectus, right? Someone must have. Yeah, we're homo erectus. Yeah, uh, but or we're, oh, we're two oh, after, oh, right? Because we're, yeah, we're yeah, homo yeah. sapien sapien. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. The double sape. You got to have yeah, the double. Yeah. yeah. There was a couple other erectus that we banged. And then there's a third nice. one that they've like never discovered any bones or evidence of, but they can just tell from our genetic record that they're like there's something that there's was a missing piece banging us hole, somewhere yeah. along the way cool. so so there's there's stuff like that that you can do to kind of estimate some of the variation that's out there and uh with it, it's definitely harder with um uh like invertebrates in the ocean because they don't have bones so you don't get fossils so oh, the, the right. best you can hope for is like something got pressed in between some rock and and made a cast like an imprint in it. That's cool. Know? Is yeah. that technically not a fossil if it's not made of bone? Or a fossil That's isn't a even question. bone necessarily. Like a fossil is like a I don't know what a fossil is. It's an imprint. Archaeology it's, is not my strong suit, but yeah, because I thought it was fossil was just the bone and it was brown for whatever reason, but it's not even that. It's like the thing imprinted somehow. Help us out mm. in the comments and win two percent off any item <laughs> under two dollars in the world. Any item in the whole world, not even in our store. These are 2% just mouth off sounds. These are just item. mouth sounds. <laughs> I can't believe I'm typing in what is a fossil. This is one of those things where the the illusion of explanatory depth. It's just a, a well preserved remains impression or trace of anything. Impression. Any, there we go. Any once living thing from the past geological age. So there. Yeah. So yeah, You're it correct. could be a bone, but it also couldn't. It, it also could just be an imprint, and there's no actual remaining thing that would have right. been that but the but, dna is still on it somehow it, yeah sometimes yeah. yeah and and there so there's still so there's also like there there's there's things like like in the ocean or like you know various bacteria or viruses or, or whatever else certain certain life that's like that's really old especially in the ocean like weird like worms and 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 things that um that just haven't changed really they just like some of them the went most off conservative and became life in the world and then other things are just like nope it, like uh like fish for example um uh they think it uh, maybe started because there's um 
there's there's things that um like uh i think sea cucumber and coral and um these other living things that start as fish for like a little basically they're they're like sperm or or you know like little gametes swimming around for a little while and some of them will even have like little eyes or some more and more sophisticated uh just zygote and tail basically yeah and it's able to like find its way around by you know figure out a place that's warm enough for the right texture or whatever and then it'll just plop there for life and they think some of those things just for like nope I'm just going to keep on <laughs> trucking <laughs> and and then we're eventually able to become fish that then became lizards, became everything. That's else. everything, right? Like yeah. any or maybe not, but every species, part of it splits off to evolve and part of it, maybe not consciously at all. It just kind of works out that way. Some of it goes on to do bigger, better things, maybe mm-hmm. not bigger, better, maybe worse in some cases, but then there's there's never a species that okay everybody let's all go evolve some of them probably stick around unless they're eradicated yeah yeah and it, well in in a lot of a lot of what happens in the evolution that we're more familiar with which is the stuff that happens on land mammals and and such that we have an easier time researching and a longer history of doing so is uh is, is there's genetic islands that happen for various reasons but uh, oftentimes it's like they're this population along a small river and then the river gets wider and wider until they can no longer you know like these Mm. two parties of like zebra like things or whatever got separated over time and then kept on breeding and nothing's going to go you know the exact uh the exact same way even if it's the same species there's going to be some change that happens given enough time but with the ocean you don't have those same islands happening necessarily there's just it's just this vast it's big soup yeah thing so uh so yeah i would i would like to advocate for one um uh as we start getting into this i i'm hoping to maybe explore the idea of maybe we could have like a mom c station instead oh of, yeah like of, sea quest of, yeah i'm hoping we did you ever maybe watch sea quest i didn't but i i saw enough of the things to sort of i don't remember understand. much of it but it's that same premise of um you know people think space is all this exciting thing but you know most of the ocean has been unexplored and we're like finding new crazy alien sort of things under the sea but it was star trek for the ocean basically yeah yeah yeah. maybe it doesn't hold up maybe it sucks now but i remember liking it there's the captain he's got gray hair and he's like makes good decisions and then there's the dolphin (laughs) darwin that has a computer and it can communicate to you (laughs) Shout out to Darwin, the dog. Oh, Rihanna's dog, Darwin. Mm-hmm. He's a good boy. Um, Darwin C. Birdsworthy. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm a big supporter of that premise of that show anyway, because there is so much that we can learn about life and alien existence. And I, I think I, I, picked the act i'm usually if someone asks me my favorite thing in an aquarium it's usually a cuttlefish if they have them around but that's because aquariums always have an octopus they don't always have a good why are cuttlefish interesting well they're also cephalopods they're they're so you got you got you got octopus squid and and um what's that so octopus is eight uh yeah. tentacles cephalopod mm-hmm. is seven six i'm trying to like understand why they're sep and oct i think oct it's is for cephalopod eight. oh ceph okay scratch that scratch yeah. that right off the record yeah um yeah they're just mollusks and uh and then cuttlefish they and they they have they come from the same 
branch of uh of life and what what's mm. what's so uh, long, long before our so th- this is actually after our split so our split was 600 million years ago common ancestors like a fucking worm it had like a few neurons and stuff and then they split off and things a lot of things just latched latched to the uh, to something and held on and would filter things or whatever that would come through that was a lot of early ocean life like uh barnacle type stuff the early mollusks and and then so what happens is once you first once you start get getting multicellular life then um then you get like bigger and bigger life and then you get things that can eat that life to get fast energy faster than by those other means that those smaller things are getting it and then there becomes um you know and then things can eat that and so on and so it probably started at first with things that would feed on the dead so things would go around and then like a dead thing would show up and it, great you get to eat it and then probably their selection to have a fresher and fresher dead thing was probably packed with more nutrients had less disease or whatever and then eventually evolved to like you know what's really fresh alive things and then <laughs> got some claws or something like that so then so then once the weapons birth of started killing off, yeah the birth of killing and then once weapons start off then you need defenses and then, so then shells and things started evolving shortly after that. So then you start getting shields and things like that. And things start Ooh. getting claws and big teeth and and stuff. And We wouldn't have so many cool things if it wasn't for um, murder. killing and needing to yeah. protect yourself from murder. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That's predator prey is one of the biggest driving forces Mm -hmm. especially in the octopus actually they don't i don't think they have a lot of sexual selection going on what does that mean that they don't have a lot of it they're not terribly social oceans are really big they live fairly short lives they are not reproductively mature for all of that long so it's like do they die after mating or that's a different animal they do well the the right after the males die the male. after mating. I'm not sure how much longer. But once again, it's just like, it's no other reason. It's just evolution didn't have any use for that thing after <laughs> it did its job. And then uh, the 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 mothers die after their, after their brood hatches. Uh. Ver- various species is different. There's one species of octopus that has like the longest brood of anything on earth, which is like they'll sit on their eggs for like four years while they wow. while they develop. And then once they're gone, they the mom dies. I don't know how much. Yeah, you think the males um, have it tough and then you realize like, oh no, you're gonna die too. You just we just need you around a little bit more to to brood and give birth to these children. Then you die. Yeah, exactly. Do they, did the babies eat it like a spider does? I Sometimes don't, the baby spiders eat the mom. I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised, but I wouldn't be surprised if that's not the case either. Octopus in general are legs. carnivores. Maybe that's what it's, who is? Uh, 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 octopus will be carnivore or, or um, uh, cannibals. I mean, they'll, they'll cannibalize. Oh, octopuses are cannibals? They will be, yeah. Yeah, uh, oh, interesting. Not, not, not like it's not their main source of food or anything like that. But yeah, they're not terrible. Do you know much about the telepathy? Um, or maybe more. not telepathy in that they like uh, think thoughts to each other. Telepathy might not be the right word. Maybe the visual language. Some octopuses have like a visual um, ink blot sort mm-hmm. of Rorschach uh, changing thing. And that's their language, I think. Yeah, they have everything from basic from like they get really dark to to uh, signal aggression and really light to signal um, uh, like I'm not looking for a fight. 
basically. Oh, um, I thought it's like really complex though. I thought they found that they're really intelligent and like on the level of dolphins and whales and stuff. Octopus are really intelligent. Could be wrong. And it's why it's why we're uh it's it's why we're going to talk about them. It's because um or it's why we are talking about them is because they so they have so this this is one of my favorite concepts. It always blows my mind. It happens in a lot of different things, but convergent evolution. We've talked about it on the show before, and this is when this is when some sort of uh, behavior trait, morpholo- morphological thing happens, independent, like on its own in a different species that's unrelated to the other species. Like flights taken off independently on Earth, like over and over mm. again at least like three or four five times or something like that and it's just like once something gains the ability to like glide or fly or whatever it's just like that's a super useful thing and it just takes off and octopus have um convergent brains so they're they're the only they're the only invertebrate with large brains that that after that split that made um between vertebrates and invertebrates and and that common ancestor 600 everything else all these vertebrates went off and grew brains but we have like a lot of common ancestors like you said dolphins and so we have much closer common ancestors to dolphins um than octopus it was just a fucking worm and then um the mollusks and cephalopods and things like that went off and started getting some little bits of neural this and that but nothing like the octopus so the octopus if if you wanted to be like what would an alien or what could an alien brain be like something that is like that uh, as foreign from our brain but is still a robust um, you know, complex thing doing pretty intricate behaviors and stuff. It would definitely be the octopus. Um, Is it still double hemisphere? No, they're not. Uh, they're not. They're no hems um, at all. No, they're not bilateral. Um, they're there. So that's already perception and consciousness has to be different because double hemisphere. We have. We have different halves that do different things and you show someone something with closing their left eye and then you have them write it with their left uh, with their left eye open a response and and like there's uh, you know the two halves of the brain aren't necessarily communicating in the right way and in these patients yeah. that have had their brain um their i think cerebellum severed and uh, all this co- we'll, we'll have to do an episode about that sometime once i bone up it is on funny it. that it's like an america not that america is the only divided place but you know we live in america and it is the star of division and all that kind of stuff but it's you know the left side and the right side and it does it and we have it in our own in each yeah. individual we have uh a thing that that works differently and together and completely different well, that's the thing is it makes sense to delegate and and it, so there's so many of the once evolution stumbled on like oh you have you have like two halves of a thing and you have the symmetrical thing and it can like walk and fly around and i and all of these things like everything just kind of got built on that on that framework and um and i don't think the octopus is like that in that way but a different and almost more extreme extent where they have uh, basically two thirds of their brain is like in their arms. They have their, their like main brain is still like a central kind of processor. Like we would think of our brain, but then they have brains basically like in each arm, two thirds of their neurons. So like neurons distributed throughout it, or you're talking little actual brain things. Yeah. They have like little, little centers within I think within each arm, uh, I feel like I could be getting That's that wrong. That's pretty cool. Tentacle. Yeah. Maybe they're also called arms. So, yeah, tentacle. Um, yeah. It, you, you can call them arms or legs or whatever. No one seems to mind. 
um, yeah. <laughs> when talking about you octopus. You can't say anything anymore. I tried calling <laughs> it an arm and some bio- octobiologist fucking killed me. <laughs> so Strangled me with his arms. There's... Um, so... Kind of, in the same way that um that message there's two-way communication between the two halves of our brain octopus have a kind of a distributed brain system and so each arm does or tentacle each tentacle uh thinks for itself um but can also be controlled by the brain which and also it's like kind of misleading for me to be pointing up here too because their brains mm-hmm. like wrapped around their throat in like a weird, weird way too so what's the fucking dome for what's the big yeah, they, they have the some brains up there too first off they can be like the whatever shape brain. they want <laughs> it's a weird way to have a brain because you can uh, uh, there's sometimes there's octopus found that have they and in case I, in case anyone's being driven crazy you're like it's octopi it's not actually that's just a common misunderstanding it is really the plural, and what the, is the, i the, the plural of octopus is octopus um geese and, is gander snails is snuff crows is murder something has i in it though oh yeah yeah, other things do. It's a, I think it's a Latin, um, uh, uh, suffix or whatever. I, I don't yeah, know grammar very after. well. Um, Prefixes before suffixes after. But I'm trying to think of what it is with I. But so octopuses. It, octopus. God, that feels good. <laughs> it's just octopus. It's plural. Plural is octopuses. I know the plural of octopus is octopus. That's yeah. stupid. <laughs> That's so stupid. I, I I don't disagree with you. Can honestly. you go get me? Can you go get those octop? Can you get? Oh, I guess if you say those, that indicates it. <laughs> it's like I just need octopus. Okay, and then they come back with a thousand. <laughs> what are you doing? I said octopus. Yeah, I brought octopus. Where did they you get a thousand back. of them? At the store eye. <laughs> yeah, people think they them is confusing. What about octopus? <laughs> Just one, but many. Uh, so they found they found octopus that have eaten something sharp that punctured through their throat and gone and went into their brain. So sorry about like, that. That was probably us. <laughs> it's probably I mean, an old Bic razor. There's all sorts of shells and stuff like that. You know? There's, yeah. Yeah. It was probably in the but, ocean. It's not us, <laughs> yeah. but it's, but it's strange to have like, why, why would you have your brain like wrapped around your, your throat, throat when like, yeah. things are just going to be like, but there's, you know, they don't have bones. They need to be so so they started so so kind of like um so so kind of like our our fish friends the explorers that just were like no i'm not plopping down i'm gonna keep going mollusks had these this defense of this shell and then uh, the early ancestors of of the the cephalopods uh, and uh, like the squid cuttlefish octopus uh, some of them just started being like, you know what? I'm leaving this thing. I don't need this <laughs> stupid shell. It made them really mobile. They were able to like start feeding and, and, uh, eat more, um, and, and become predators themselves. And so yeah, the shell people are preppers and it's like, come on guys, there is just nothing out here. It's safe. Not only- not only just that, w- but they love octopus love eating like shelled things and like crab. They can like rip it apart. No problem. So they just went out and just started ripping apart their neighbors and getting cheap food and everything. 
Have you seen that video of the octopus that lifts its aquarium top off and then like crawls out and goes into the other aquarium and like eats fish or whatever was in the other yeah. one and then it like goes back and then people are like, where, what happened to the fish? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that happens. That sort of thing happens in aquariums all the time because octopus are, are very smart. They're not, um, it's hard to. Not smart enough. Well, it's hard to like know how to define intelligence and what it is, but they they have they they have a lot of brains going for them, definitely. Like the amount of um, neurons, the thing that that they have is like, I think it's quite a bit more than. I think it's like a chimp. I think it's like the same neurons as a, a, a amount of neurons as a chimp. Um, That's pretty if I'm cool. Remembering right, and. And it's distributed in this weird fashion where their arms can kind of like go in and think for themselves a bit. And then there's the central processor that can also make s decisions over it and give pe like we have like if, if I if, if you were to like uh, burn your finger or stub your toe or something like that, a, a signal sent really quickly to your spine and then your reflexes go off and and it's it gets your hand out of that flame before you even feel it yeah before yeah before the signals even sent to your brain it's like don't need to check in with the boss about this one he'll mm -hmm. like this yeah, is he'll our thank job me. yeah and so there's a little bit of that going on but on way more of a sophisticated level so it's really hard to imagine what the kind of conscious experience is of an octopus and imagine if your arms could do the dishes without you having to be there to do them that's kind of it in a way if it's got its yeah. own mini yeah. boss yeah yeah that it's like okay the arms are going to oh cool i did the dishes for the last 10 minutes just by standing here yeah i didn't have to be like oh, okay i'm gonna scrub this one now and i'm gonna get that one out with this butter knife it just does it just and same with their color, their color changing is even more like autonomic than that, which is they have at least, I, I, I don't know how confirmed this is because this has been like a mystery for a long time, which is they, they haven't been today, able, we saw able it. to understand the camouflage. They have the most sophisticated camouflage on earth. Like, like people think about chameleons and lizards and how cool it is that they can change color. They're doing that through hormones, which are going through a bloodstream and working really lizards relatively, are or octopuses are li lizards, really yeah. relatively slowly. Whereas, so it's, yeah, that's it's. I, I I have no idea how long it takes for a lizard to like change its color to how it wants to, but it's at least a few seconds. A it's not instant. It's definitely not instant. Octopus is a blink of an eye. It's neurons doing it. So it's, Ooh. it's immediate. And Cool. But is it as convincing? It's fast, but do they match the background as well as the chameleon does? Oh, yeah. The chameleon owns that, uh, that power. It's associated with them, even if they're not the best at it. They aren't that's the branding. best at it. Yeah, that's, that's good branding. Yeah, it's like a once cheetah they got being out of like a hundredth fastest. <laughs> yeah, you find out. Well, yeah, it's we actually the rhinoceros fun. is faster than the cheetah. Just people think the cheetah is because it looks like it is. But really, I mean, the rhinoceros. <laughs> we, we have a we, we have a fondness for things on the land and they're easier to research and like you know, in certain areas, you can be a little kid and like get to play with lizards and stuff like that. Whereas octopus, not no such luck. And and because we are land, we are land animals. Yeah, we're land animals. So so yeah, I I wouldn't blame people for um for uh, giving that giving that trophy to the chameleon, but. Octopus have it by a long shot. Maybe I guess cuttlefish would probably be better. Or more and squids, squids do some uh, some mating behavior stuff that's interesting. So does cuttlefish. But squid will like they'll change half of their body to be like flirting with a lady. So this is over here, colorful on the right side, flirting with a lady, and then on the left side, it will be no homo. Uh, 
It will be. <laughs> Sup, bro? <laughs> Just not showing anything or indicating any kind of wanting to get down. Well, let's play Madden. Let's you sit on that other chair. I'll sit on the edge of this couch. Meanwhile, on the other side of the squid, some tango, like really South American flirtatious hip shaking, doing it dance. <laughs> <laughs> what's the most doing it dance i know grinding is but like those tango like you know those brazilian dances i don't know what the, there's many words for them but have you seen those ones where it's like oh, it's a yeah. combination of them they they come apart they come together it's very like intimate close like fake slapping back and forth fake <laughs> avoiding the slap it's like almost articulate like illustrating a whole life of a relationship and a dance uh. <laughs> Someone post yeah. that in the comments. Post it all in the comments. Post, post something. It all in the comments. <laughs> post something in there. Please, for the love of Jesus Christ, post <laughs> something for our octopus asses. Uh, so, um, so yeah, that actual, I, I hate to ruin it, but now I don't even want people to know the truth. But the other half. Oh, will it's be, not the no homo option. Uh, the uh, other half will just be like general camouflage defense, you know, from predators. So this half will be that like, here's some camo? predators. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. <laughs> when I think camo, I don't really think, uh, you know, pride month. <laughs> that's true it is so funny the way that uh it, see see that's something the something that octopus don't have that we do have is like robust cultural transmission and and the it because they're robust they're so, cultural transmission yeah they're is really that flags mm, Oh no no I mean I mean just like traditions and and behaviors and mimetic things handed down through generations. So oh, there are, do they or do we know that they don't or we just haven't observed it? They're very solitary and their parents die when they're so no one's around to teach them anything and and they they will and can be social but that that happens very few times. It's like if a, a a boat sinks or something and turns out to be this great hiding spot for octopus, they'll team up and they'll they'll like okay, we'll like figure out a way to make this work and and then there starts to become some like mating selection things. A male will act aggressively to other males and like guard territory and stuff like that. But usually, if you're an octopus, it seems like if you just run into another octopus of the opposite sex, you just bang it out and die. That's just what you do. <laughs> and they get real busy. There's 16 limbs flying all over the place. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, and they have their, um, they have their, uh, they have their genitals and stuff in there, in their tentacles, uh, like in I, each I, suction I, pod. No, uh, there's like a tentacle that has like the genitals. So I wonder where, I don't know where that one is, but I. Oh, that's probably a nice like prank. Like, hey, back. I'm Phil. Nice to meet you. And then you <laughs> extend your genital <laughs> tentacle to the boss. Like, Haha, I'm just kidding. Yeah, because like they always you just feel a tickle on your other tentacle. <laughs> and, and ladies got like a little thing in their armpit, basically. They're like an armpit pit. vag. Mm -hmm. very cool yeah very cool they kind of eat out of their armpits too but we don't it's like it's tough to define what an octopus shape is i mean we can kind of see it like regularly because we see them swimming around but they they prefer to they find like small spaces to uh you know like rats or something like prefer to like live in small spaces um for for protection um uh, even though they're like curious and explorers and stuff they'll go out and explore this has been this has been filmed uh, of octopus taking coconut shells with them, <laughs> with them around so if something comes by they can just hide oh, helmet? 
<laughs> Under so the they coconut. do want the shell. They do need the shell after all. Yeah, I mean, in, in certain circumstances, they got the camouflage. But why? Why grow it? Why like use the ec- excess energy when you can just find a coconut shell and then you don't have to expend energy growing one? And they can also get one fit. a la carte. I I I don't know. I I would say cuttlefish. So I did I I I did a little octopus wormhole. I didn't um I didn't do a deep dive into cuttlefish or or squid. Um, and I really want to into cuttlefish eventually, but. But I think I think cuttlefish change. Um, I want to say that they change shape and like really intra. But cuttlefish have like one large bone in them, so they can't change as many shapes. Whereas an octopus, an octopus, they'll they'll put them in like give them like little tube mazes and stuff. And an octopus can fit through a space that's like a little bit bigger than its eye. It can cool. just go right. Through. Yeah, it's just gel. It's the secret <laughs> yeah. word, world of Alex Mack uh-huh. or Odo from Star Trek or who else turns into a puddle? Just those two. Secret world of Alex Mack and Odo from Deep Space Nine. Yeah, it's really interesting. And oh, so here, here was the thing that I was going to say that they're just trying to, I think that they've just been trying to figure out um over the last i don't know decade or so uh i I think 20 years ago they figured out that uh, octopus are colorblind so they're like how are they doing this how are they doing all of this they're so colorful yeah what's going on here and um so colorblind doesn't mean like no color at all you know, but it's also like the way that they make color is really strange. They have different layers. So they have they have one layer with like um, it's like brown. What is it? It's like brown, red and yellow or something like that. That can be uh, like like it's basically muscles. The three bathroom that gets, colors. <laughs> uh, that get stretched in different ways. <laughs> they get the three bathroom colors and that's all you need. <laughs> And then they have, um, uh, let me look that up because as, as someone that knows colors more than I do, maybe you'd be interested. Um, I wonder if we're doing anything like that where we're blind to the output, but it's a very like complex and beautiful output to someone with other senses. Like you can't hear that sound you're making. No, what? You're just, you're emanating this beautiful music just by existing. No, I just, I don't hear that frequency. Sorry. (laughs) It's all for you. Um, Oh, yeah. Yellow, yellow, red, yellow, red, brown, and uh, orange and black in some species. Yeah. All colors you'll find in the toilet. (laughs) Uh, and um and so then they have a second layer of of skin that has things that reflects that takes light and reflects it back in different angles uh, or 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 different at a different spectrum so it's reflecting Mm. light at a in um like uh, you know whatever different colors and and then they have another layer under that that's just reflecting the light back, like kind of like a mirror, I think. But I think they figured out not too long ago that they they think that there's um, receptors in their skin that's picking up on the light frequency around them. So it's, mm. it's like getting the color of the plant in its skin and then just changing that that color and that's how it's It's got the eyedropper from photoshop yeah do you ever use the little eyedropper which the eyedropper is not just in photoshop i think you can use it if you're i think it's on instagram and stuff too now yeah Yeah. i'm i'm so fascinated as tools that are for specialists expand into the world and then all of a sudden it's commonplace to know what the eyedropper is what saturation is what 
uh, contrast is, what, um, you know, hue, all these things. Pretty mm -hmm. cool how it just permeates outwards. So you got to keep up. You can't just rely on thinking that knowing what an eyedropper is is special. Mm. Yeah, yeah. That is funny. That is because like, yeah, I Instagram learned made everyone eyedropper. a better photographer. Yeah. Hmm. Not good, but better in that you're just more knowledgeable about terms that, you know, 30 years ago, no one would have known those terms except for photographers. But now everyone knows you have hue, saturation, vignette, hmm. shadow, contrast, anal, all that. <laughs> All of it, huh? <laughs> Even anal? Especially. Do you, do you know how to use the anal tool? <laughs> oh, Let that's me show my you. favorite. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so, yeah, I, I, seemingly this, this, this color variation is just being regulated autonomically by their, uh, through their skin. But also they're, especially in, like cuttlefish, for example, they're clearly they're clearly seeing things and adapting too. So if you just like if they're in a tank and you just drop a pebbles and things around it that are like a different color than the like it's like it's a um uh yeah you know like a, a gravelly uh darker sand or something that they're in and then you just drop some white um pebbles around it will make like pebble shaped white things of that same size on it on itself so that it so that it blends that's cool yeah, so it's yeah. all for it's all to to avoid predators like it has nothing to do because i guess because there's no um what do you call it sexual selection going yeah. on with that stuff that's why they don't see that's it because it's not for them yeah, yeah. I don't know enough about the mating behavior of of the of of squid or cuttlefish or, or squid. cuttlefish. Um, I I think it's I think I think they're a little kinkier than the octopus is. Mm. But that's what's crazy about the octopus because we talk a lot. We just had the episode about you know conspicuous consumption and and we had the um you know around Valentine's Day we did the sexual selection. So we talk about this a lot. All of the advertising, all of the stuff that. Uh, humans and lots of species, lots of vertebrates do to advertise this flair, to uh, to put a cost on themselves, to show off, to attract mates, to attract peers, to express dominance and all that. Good and, stuff right here. And also watch out. <laughs> exactly. And octopus doesn't seem to have been influenced by that stuff nearly as much as a lot of other uh, most other species on earth just because of how solitary they are especially ones that are that intelligent it, and um and so that that's really interesting because by our standards if we look at an octopus it looks it through my eyes it looks like a very flamboyant like just looking at it I it, it, knowing nothing else, doing no research, I would automatically be like, "Well, there's a lot of sexual selection happening there. That yeah. must be a really hyper social species." Because they're so colorful, they can move in all these interesting ways, and they're very curious too. It, what, what's weird is they'll they'll They've hide got in all, all the these, red flags. They have all of it. They'll hide in these like they'll hide in these like little spaces and areas and everything. And then a scuba diver like you just like that will swim down and they'll just like kind of peek out and be like, well, oh, maybe I'll check it out. Like what a <laughs> weird, Could you, like, a human with like a tank and like they can see really well other than their color blindness. There's nothing else that looks like us in the ocean. And if you just happen to stumble upon an octopus, you're probably not going to see the thing. But if you happen to and you go out, it'll reach a tentacle out and be like, what, cool. what is that? Just like poke around. And if you're just swimming around. Like where there's researchers, so octopus just, they just don't give a fuck. They like, don't even, it's like they, when 
by a lot of reports, if you're in the ocean, it's a little different in an aquarium, but if you're in an ocean and you come across an octopus, a lot of times they're just, especially if there's like a little octopus city because of one of these rare occurrences of things, they just don't even care. They just act like you're not even there, which is such a fucking weird thing for a smart yeah. creature to look at. Mom and dad a... didn't tell them to avoid strangers. Like, I guess they that grew up alone. okay. No friends that tell them like, oh, stay out of this neighborhood. They're just curious, <laughs> camouflagey neuron in their arms, uh, <laughs> curious pods that somehow made it. Which is that? If, if that the arm is cut off, to, yeah. Does it still go off and do it stuff? It does. It does because it has its own brain, and yeah. So it so it, it won't live for long. But it's like it, it won't oh, live for long. But can go, time. it can it can it can still taste. It can still move around, make decisions, experience things. Cool. The, in in like yeah yeah. So it can go off and live its own life, independent of things. I, for like I always, fifteen minutes, maybe. I don't know how long. Um, I wonder how curious a, a tentacle on its own is. I think pretty curious, actually. Yeah, because they, they <laughs> Hi, do nice to meet you. I'm Rick. I don't know where the seven other guys went. They do studies where, where they'll like put things behind a thing that's like so small that that the octopus can't get in to see anything or whatever. And and it'll just reach its tentacles through into like different chambers. And as soon as. As, as as soon as as soon as one sucker finds something uh, they've been able to trace it that right away it's sending information to the next sucker to the next sucker to the next sucker and then they all just like all the other suckers are like hey look look what's going on over here uh, oh it, like ants mm -hmm. maybe that's not the best analogy but still it's not a bad one and so the little scout that goes back and yeah tells the rest. I think Do they ever conflict. Is there any cases of them having like a schizophrenic episode where this one limb yeah. is just uh, we it, we can't get it to cooperate with the rest of us. It just only oh, does its own oh, thing. Oh, I see what you mean. Oh, I. That's a really good question. Who knows? I mean, you. I guess you would have to. You would have to like we. Like, what would that look like? This one limb doesn't seem to be behaving. And we wouldn't know why, like, necessarily, you know? It's, it's like, well, it, do they... It, if you come and visit an octopus and they, they come out, like in aquarium settings or whatever, they always lead with one. Uh, they always lead with, uh, like, one tentacle. I don't know if it's the same tentacle every time, but I, do, I bet you don't lead... With the genital tentacle. Yeah, I that's tucked behind your back. <laughs> yeah, you would think. I don't know this. Hi, I'm seven tentacle Harry over here. <laughs> Nothing to see back there. Oh, it's a good... Uh, I was going to propose to you. You spoiled it. <laughs> don't look. You got to be a surprise. Very clever octopuses. Little antisocial... <laughs> maybe not antisocial, just not social... I Nerds, uh, colorblind. I want. A, I want a. I want a comic strip called the Seven Tentacle Harry. <laughs> <laughs> he's always everything. He's like always hiding something, and then like everyone's always like a little bit suspicious, and then it just turns out it's his dick. The whole time. <laughs> it's okay. Every We've time. all got it. We're not going to bite it <laughs> off. We're antisocial. I don't like how this tastes anyway. Um, have you ever eaten octopus, by the way? I'm sure I have. I mean, that's calamari, right? Or no. is that squid or something? Um, I think I did a little bit in one um, big sushi boat thing that was various things. If it wasn't octopus, it was something close. But I've never, you know, cracked a head open on pavement and then <laughs> ate it like a coconut or anything. I've tried it amongst other things. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> uh, just, well, there, there was no that one time too. I took the octopus, I picked it up by its tentacles, <laughs> and then I cracked its head open on the pavement and ate it. It was a party. Um, grilled octopus no. is really good. Although, oh, I don't think I've had that. It's fantastic. I keep thinking about the Jim Gaffigan joke of like, yeah, everything's good if it's fried. Like, oh, you want this hose? It's f- good. This is good fried hose. I hate fried food. Oh, really? I'm not a fried boy. Yeah, not not, not a, even uh, chicken. Not even good Nashville hot it, chicken. It, it's it's fine. It's fine. Um, you too know heavy, what it is? Too greasy. This is all it is. Um, I'm not sure I was over the moon about deep fried food before I became a comedian, but oh, I've had a lot of free meals at comedy clubs. A lot of just yeah, shit that adds up. Cheap fucking deep fried stuff. Oh my god, that adds I used up to get bacon right. wrapped mozzarella sticks. Yeah, yeah. That's a great, uh, uh, like, uh, okay, mozzarella sticks, cheese curds. You, you, you fry it, you deep fry some cheese. I'm going to have it for sure. But there's the Wisconsin Most talking. other things. Yeah. God, those just fucking frozen chicken fingers and shit that they serve at comedy <laughs> clubs. It should be like, because you spent, I mean, maybe every kitchen is gross and I've just like never worked in the service in- industry and it's just like, this is what kitchens are like or whatever. But I've been to so many comedy clubs where it's like that, that's what you're fucking serving people. That's crazy. <laughs> like they just open up a box of things or it's like, they're probably like 10 cents a piece for one of these gross fucking chicken fingers and they're selling kind of want one now twelve dollars are you getting another you're getting a hankering a little bit a little (laughs) bit acme in minneapolis has a good restaurant oh yeah that's a a very not comedy club like it's a surprise it's like only Mm -hmm. not only is their food fantastic uh and their owner's amazing the first time i was ever there like I, i was having dinner with my family and uh, Lewis, the owner, came by and just bought everything for everybody. And like, nice. I wasn't like a somebody or anything like that. Like, I had a little bit of buzz or whatever. But I, that's just what he does when like he cares. someone comes through town. But not only is the fucking food at Acme Comedy Club in Minneapolis fantastic. Trying to think of one of the dishes that I like a lot. Uh, if I looked at the menu, I would know. There's there's a couple things that I get every time that I'm there. Um, but uh, they also know food in the showroom. Oh, oh I, I didn't know that. I had never noticed that, but that's true. That. No. The restaurant's outside. You get like a package. You get the deal. You know, you get X off the comedy ticket or... Pardon me for a second while I maybe sneeze and I'm back. <laughs> and oh, that's so unsatisfying. I know. To see I someone almost sneeze. sneeze and then it doesn't. I know. <gasps> well, sneezing is my favorite things to do. Uh, probably one of my favorite things to do, but on camera. It's like, oh, it, that's true. There's, it's like, you're taking have you heard Howard Kramer's joke? Like if it wasn't a natural yeah, thing, yeah, you said if sneezing that. was a drug, it would be all over the place. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. you get pulled over. It's like, uh, were you sneezing in here? It's like, no. Why is your uh, dashboard wet? What's what's all this over your steering wheel? I forget the joke. <laughs> yeah. Or that part of it was what, what? What's this? What happens if I take this? It's a sneeze. What happens? Oh, nothing at first, but then. Your head whips back at 100 miles an hour and everything in your sinuses just comes shooting out. <laughs> Something's really funny about there's nothing at first. <laughs> just the feeling you know it's coming. We could do a sneezing episode at some point. <clears throat> it's not top, it's not first hundred episodes quality, but definitely oh, in the. In the mid hundreds, a sneezing episode. 
We could we could do or maybe not there, just sneezing, sneeze, laugh, yawn, like yeah. The, I I think the the, th- the things family. that that like are these um like gastral kind of responses that that are kind of automatic and you kind of have control over them. You know, like you can hold a fart or whatever, and it's also like natural. You have a vote. Or, yeah, yeah. Y- you but, have yeah. you have shares in the company, and you have like a majority stake. But sometimes you can get voted out, and some people get voted <laughs> off the board entirely of like bowel stuff later in their life. They get pushed off the the voting board. There could be a whole Pixar movie about that, like the 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 characters, and there's like the sneeze character, the cough character, the laugh, the yawn, the I mean, yeah. It's two hours. You could do two hours on that. <laughs> I won't do it, but someone could do two hours. You could write it out. Hire hire some writer that's good. <laughs> hire a writer that's good. Tell yeah. them this idea. <laughs> do uh, it. And make sure the animation's interesting. Not just good. It's gotta, it's gotta be interesting too. It's not a bad idea. <clears throat> But um, not to sidetrack. I mean, the sneeze sidetracked. What was it? The comedy club uh, food. I was just wondering if you had ever had octopus before. That's where that got started. But oh, they have right. their sense of uh, their sense of taste and things are is really. Uh, uh, oh, I I was thinking, um, in terms of like how weird it is that we come down and they're okay with it, and also that. Other things, I it, I think maybe it's the advantage that we're so foreign looking that like sharks and things are like, yeah, I'm just going to keep on going here. Because like, <laughs> why don't we get eaten more in the ocean? Um, but that is... Not that a is lot of the, meat on us. Uh, uh, and also, yeah, we're know. covered... We're covered in like stuff like we're normally not things, nude. Weird smells. Yeah, it, like lots of ineb- inedible things. But also, we are the scariest animal on the planet. If you look at the the death count, we've got everybody beat. But you don't know that from looking at us. Like that's our, true. Our tools, our cooperation, those sorts of things did wreaked all of the habit havoc. You, Unless they smell you the confidence. Know. Yeah, man, maybe. They can just sense that like, yeah, I'm top of the food chain. What are you going to do? Mm. But yeah, any that, shark could take us. A shark could take the rock. No problem. But that's, yeah, easy. Actually, also like, the rock's like 70 now. I should stop referencing the rock. <laughs> it's 2040 now. The rock's been dead for five years. I got to, it's all about uh, the kid that plays Ashtray on Euphoria. That's the main guy or something. Um... I, I'm not sure. So, so octopus aren't, aren't like necessarily like violent. You, you, you wouldn't have to be like overly worried if you ran into an octopus. Not that there's never been a human attacked by them or anything, but there's lots of, I feel like I could take any octopus. Oh, you would be wrong. They, which one could take me? Um, like, uh, they, can pull about uh, speaking of things that are like ants they can pull about a hundred times their weight so like so each, like a hundred grams uh i mean octopus no can that's be, probably a few pounds oct- they could octop- dislocate our arms probably oh yeah like if you uh, i mean there's a lot of different species of octopus some are like you know, the size of your hand or whatever, but, but those larger ones you're seeing in the aquariums and such, one of their, one of their suckers, like a sucker that's like two inches in diameter can lift like 30 pounds on its own. They have one, like, it'll sucker. Give you one sucker and they have like, um, I think like 1600 of those things or something like that. They're not all that size, but, um, what but, if I wear a spiked suit? <clears throat> Then they'd be in trouble. Yeah, wear a spike to Okay, suit. good. Um, but if they I I think I think if like a large octopus got wrapped around you and like just wanted to like just didn't want to let you go, 
I don't think the rocks get out of that. I think it, I think it takes like, I think it would take some estimation of like nearly a ton of pressure or something like that to uh, at least a half a ton, if not a I'm ton of pressure. I'm just under a ton of like, pressure right now. <laughs> I need the octopus to let go of me. Then I'll be okay. <laughs> yeah. And so they're, they're surprisingly strong. Like they like crabs and stuff. They just go in and just rip off their, you know, how we're using all these sophisticated tools yeah. to, they just go and just rip them <laughs> apart. No problem. And, um, and yeah. So, but it's so, yeah, you want an octopus to like it. If you wore the spike suit, if you went back in and it like didn't like the spiky things, if you went back to that aquarium wearing something else, the octopus would likely recognize you and not like you. Like they, oh. they have, they have a good memory in captivity. They have, um, they have, they recognize they'll have like they, they did studies early on where they would um uh they, they would um like fe- have have two people wearing the exact same uniform and everything else and like looked somewhat similar and one person would feed them why am i getting blurry yeah Seeing unblur that? yourself yeah you're oh yeah you came back yeah, there's there's something. I thought it was my goggles my, for a second. No, it's it's not. There's there's. I was trying to fix this before the thing. I'm still adjusting to this new studio, and there's just something off with my uh, with my camera. I think some setting got yeah. changed. To all the people um, not watching the video right now, Shane got blurry. So yeah, so so they'll have like one of the people give them you know shrimp or whatever delicious reward that they that they like a lot and then they'll have another one like scratch it with a bristly pad or something like that that's like just like slightly uncomfortable <laughs> and the they immediately recognize that uh, both of those people the the next time around and they'll be friendly toward the other person they're wearing the exact same thing pretty similar looking be like you know like if you if you saw like two golden retrievers and had like a different experience with those two golden retrievers yeah. and then saw them again. One gave me a bunch of like Girardelli chocolates and the other one like a bit you. wiped. Yeah. Or no, I was going to say like uh, took a, a bristly pad. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the bite too. But no, I wouldn't be able to tell them apart. I would say fuck both of them. <laughs> exactly. And so there they have... They warm up to people and stuff like that. They they become friends with their keepers and and they also they also try to uh, they like you said they try to escape all the time. They've had to, the I think the octopus enclosure is like about the hardest thing to manage because they're always they're always figuring ways out. In fact, once once they found an octopus on an aquarium floor. And figured out that it had gotten out, unlocked this aquarium and everything else, and and found it on the floor. Uh, and then um, here's the weirdest thing about it: it was like some species of octopus. They didn't have that species of octopus <laughs> in the aquarium, <laughs> so the octopus like snuck into the aquarium somehow like came in a shipment or something like that of this or that when it was young lived like a whole life and in, in the aquarium without anyone ever seeing it or noticing That's it cool. and then fucking escaped too and they only lived to be like three years old so if octopus really yeah if octopus lived longer if they live i thought they were like a hundred year things no that's lobsters sea sea turtles see some some sea turtles are like that uh yeah i think lobsters might live a while too or no sorry lobsters they they don't die of old age i think they have something that if they weren't um killed by predators they would live forever or something yeah and they're trying to unlock that so humans can live forever because that's gonna make us happy (laughs) 
<laughs> that's the problem we just don't have enough years then we'll figure it out just give us a thousand years we won't we won't a be just thousand dumb thousand years can you imagine yeah. can you imagine the fucking nightmare that a thousand years would be because i still it's just see- seeing too much yeah, I don't know. How how old would you like to live? If honestly, yeah. I would do the thousand thing. I'm, I, I'd really? be okay with it, just because I could always kill myself. I'd like the option. That's but true. To not have it, it'd be fun just to see what happens. You can bail out if you need to. That's true. You can always kill yourself. Yeah. But who who thinks like, oh, I'd like to just be done by. I mean, you do think you'd like to be done by your 80s and 90s because you don't want to be there to witness the loss of cognitive ability and motor mm-hmm. function and just watch the, you know, watch yourself become a a worse version of yourself and lonelier and people dying, that part. But the actual, like, screw this incarnation, let's go to oblivion or start a new one where I have to be Ralph or something. Mm-hmm. Like, time to go into your Ralph incarnation now. I don't want to be yeah. Ralph. Ralph you want to be Ralph? Sorry, yeah, Ralph. No. Yeah, no. you don't want to be Ralph. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, I don't. I certainly wouldn't want to be a different. Or I Petunia. Would, uh, I don't want to be Petunia. Yeah. You have to go I be would, Petunia now. I would or rather Zarflax be a thousand year a old Shane and then take a gamble on a Zarflax. <laughs> for sure. Um, so, yeah, they, this, uh, they are they're very, very, very sneaky. They like getting into other. They, they'll. They'll like to go and get into other octopuses' tanks and, like, either eat them or bang them. Like, one or the other thing. Like, kill yeah. them first or just start eating them? Uh, uh, yeah, they'll, they'll kill them first. The octopus, are, yeah, they'll... What's their favorite like, type of killing? Like, they strangle them? I don't know how octopus They crush their throat another. brain? I would think they crush their throat brain maybe or suffocate with them your suction cups or, or you suck like the that. brain out with your suction cups. I don't know how that's because there's not a lot of really blunt, good. you know, there's no stabbing. I mean, they have blunt a mouth force type of thing. They have a, they have a beak of some kind. I don't know how powerful it they is. Just embrace them, maybe crush them with force. It's cool watching them get, uh, get things because you you know when you see an octopus like spread out uh, like all of its tentacles spread out and it's like like an umbrella or something yeah that forms a net so it's just it just becomes a net and then it just sucks everything in and then just eats it oh so they're just a net with a brain when they want to be and then other things at other times snake like in a way and that it can yeah. absorb things whole. Yeah. Snakes are sneaky, but not mischievous. They don't have the the tentacle thing. Something about having lots of limbs makes you the most mischievous thing. Because you Plus can't they keep always up with have all the, the things you're doing. They have the alibi. Like, I didn't know what that tentacle was up to. <laughs> things got a mind of Yeah, scan own. my memory. My brain, <laughs> scan it right here. And then there's like, oh, there's no memory of it doing that. Um. So yeah, so I I would say I would say that's the closest thing to an alien brain. They have, I mean, they have three hearts. They have blue blood. They have uh, the weirdest brain on Earth, in my opinion. And is it doing this again? Come on. Yeah, it loves to take you out of focus. This is the me show. It's about having focus on me oh and you're back what's weird is it's not even doing the autofocus thing like the other camera did it's something else but maybe this is just its own way of autofocus it's a setting that i need to change i guess i just went and did my first in-person uh here we are since covid and it was my first video where where all those skulls are right yeah, yeah. You talk yeah. to a skullologist, a scologist, yeah, a, a, a scologist as as the tech. What are skulls therapist. made of? Concrete, <laughs> bone, probably bone. 
<laughs> Actually, his skulls were like uh, mostly replicas. They make oh. replicas and stuff these days. Oh, so he and doesn't have real like, children's skulls on his shelf? Uh, I don't think so. I And there's also, because those Take go... Take a look at this Jeffrey right here. <laughs> those, I think those are preserved in different ways and so, but but there's like there's bone hoarders that like make they make a discovery and then they'll like sell it to a museum or something that part of the stipulation is they can't let anyone else replicate it or do anything with it and so there's certain Why? people in the just to be dicks because they're insecure or whatever else or they, they like think that's their like famous thing that no one else has and so they don't want anyone else to be able to have anything like it and how so, much farther would we be if we didn't have all that shit uh, the, know. The, you know the as a species save, this is my yeah this is mine like if there was yeah. a little more open source sharing <laughs> knowledge going on yeah it was a cool interview because that's a lot of what the that was they they made they made two um you know like uh winning the lottery type discoveries of finding past ancestors and the whole the first one they shared openly immediately with every scientist right away and then the second one that they had it was like 2013 and national geographic came in and like blogged and put out on the internet live so everyone like usually usually scientists like sometimes when i interview people they're like oh can we not talk about this i don't want like my paper to get like scooped or like whatever else or you know it's not published yet or anything and so they were like right from right from the the days of discovering like they they discovered a thing knew what they need knew like the funds they would need to be able to go and like go caving to get the thing and everything else and so right from day one the whole world was able to follow it and so just way cooler stuff happened from it and it happened so much faster and you know it was just collaborative and everything else so yeah i i agree i think that i think there should be should be a little yeah there's share big, those skulls there's a really big push for that and um there's a lot of people that don't think that um that scientific publications should be that anyone should have to pay for them ever so if you go in and you're trying to find uh some science publication about something oftentimes it's behind a paywall and oftentimes it's super expensive on its own or you join some fucking weird thing and there's a million of these things and so pro tip if you're ever looking just go to the scientist page usually it's free mm. on their own page if you it'd look up something cool you can't if, find it it'd be cool if we somehow had a seamless you know monetary system based on attention so you get you you literally do get paid for the actual attention and i know that's difficult to track and people would game it and set up computers looking at a site when there's not an actual human looking at the site but imagine if 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 people reading it that was the the currency mhm mm yeah I, I i don't know trust me it's the solution I, to everything there's no downfalls to it Economics are simple. You just follow the idea I came up with uh, two seconds ago. Big, implement big, it somehow. Boom. Yeah, bing, bang, boom. You and just then get you got paid a perfect for, uh, society. You just get paid for attention in real time. Just everyone turns into a hold my beer account. And that <laughs> was the extinction of humanity. It, <laughs> it's okay, like, maybe not attention in the spectacle, but okay, this is trickier than I thought. Then, like <laughs> knowledge, if we could, if we could track knowledge ons, like information trons, that <laughs> then each one of those you produce is equal to one current of currency, <laughs> and then um, you get currents I, built I, up, and then I think it's perfect. I mean, it is. It is, it's, 
Yeah, it's it's really tricky because people should get paid for their work and publications need to make money and blah, 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 and all those other things. But also people should have all that knowledge. So, yeah, but, but it, it's also funny because the, 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 the scientists that are like big advocates for like every publication needs to be free and the public should have this available so they can read the paper. Like, you can't give that shit away. The public's not <laughs> reading a paper. Are you <laughs> kidding me? There's like one in a thousand <laughs> listeners right now that's ever stumbled upon this situation where they're like, boy, I sure wish I could access this paper right now. <laughs> but yeah, this even to understand is blocking it. me. Yeah. <laughs> Like if it's a new discovery, it's probably going to use, uh, you know, a certain vernacular yeah, a and reference stuff there, that yeah. you need the the knowledge built up. It's never going to be a one hundred and one course within the paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you wouldn't know what to do with it. So that's our octopus episode. You you have any uh, you have any more octopus questions before we uh, start wrapping up? And I do mean, we talked on corner. the visual language. We talked about the visual language, the um, the brains and the tentacles and then the throat, the death at mating, the sneakiness, the, I don't know. I don't know if I have any other awk questions. Well, it's really, I, I mean, from, from this, do you think that there's any. What's the puss part mean? Uh, Probably tentacles. I don't know. I th I think I think octopus is derived from some old Latin, the this or that. Who knows? Um, should we look it up? Um, but so so anyway, you just look up what's puss. Uh, origin of octopus word. Um, the dictionary defines octopus as an eight tentacled creature that gets into trouble and cannot. It's see. Modern Latin <coughs> from the there modern was that Latin. sneeze. Nice from the Overdue. Greek octopus. It, uh, yeah, that's oh, not post. helping me. Not helping me. The word is Latinized form of the Greek word. Looks like octopus again, basically. No, nah, it's turtles uh, all the way which, down. We'll never find it. Oh, uh, it translates to eight foot. Eight feet. Cool. Puss. Puss must puss, be. Oh, pod. Puss must be. Foot. Yeah. Puss and pod. Puss and pod. We're in a pod. So, yeah, in terms of in terms of like searching for aliens and things, I, I think that I think that um, octopus is like kind of the closest thing that we get to do to experiencing an alien in a lot of ways, other than they don't have the knowledge passing on in the same way. And that's like that's what really sets humans apart. And so, like we show up a we're memory, we're just born into so much knowledge. Like our parents are handing off knowledge to us, like not even knowing if it's right or wrong or like whatever, like they, it's unearned knowledge that was passed on to them. That was passed on down from, from your great grandparents and culture, society. Now the internet Octopus doesn't have anything like that going on. So it's smart as fuck for a little thing that only lives for three years and has a crazy brain and experiences a conscious reality that that is like kind of incomprehensible in a lot of ways. Uh, but that's that's the thing, too, is is we don't when it comes to. Alien, first off, we're the closest thing to an alien, like our idea of what an alien is. We're the closest thing. Us going down in <laughs> fucking scuba gear and out of place and awkwardly trying to. That's 
maybe what an a ufo would be like some like clumsy like not understanding this air thing very well or being able to get around in it that well uh you know not its natural habitat or something yeah or maybe they're very good at camouflage who knows <laughs> Yeah, but, we are the the closest thing to the the standard UFO little green men thing. Yeah, and but not uh, maybe not Ridley Scott's Alien. But those are kind of more like insect type things, mm -hmm. which is that is a cool development that they they went the other way with that because so many of the other aliens were all about we want to understand love, mm -hmm. and then. This other one's about like implanting an egg through your throat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good point. I, uh, yeah, it, we need to do an insect episode sometimes. So many more mum episodes ahead, uh, in the future. I, um, I was going to say one last thing about. Uh, maybe it'll come to me. Let's do a let's do a camp out corner. Camp out corner coming at you hot like the fire you'll use to fry your s'mores. Although frying is a different technique. This is firing, not frying. But uh, what what news we got? What's some new upcoming news is? Since you and I last talked, I locked Publicly. in a band. Uh, publicly that I locked in a band call. Uh, so I got a, um, kind of fest manager and someone helping with the band booking and stuff that knows that manages bands locally, does a lot of talent buying and stuff like that. Uh, worked at the casual camp out and, um, ha has a lot of, uh, cool connections and and things going on and also like we can book our own stuff and have total say in stuff but it's going to uh make sure that uh we're getting the best of like that the area has to offer um and really good scene so we got this uh is one of my favorite bands at the casual camp out. And it's one of those like you Coldplay, look on wow. Spotify. They don't, you know, they don't have that many subscribers or anything else. But I was like, when I saw them, I was like, those guys, that's, that's who I want. It's just an instrumental band with a guitarist and a drummer, no vocals, um, uh, called slick Mahoney. They were actually one of my, there's a lot of good bands the weekend that I, it was at casual camp out lakeside retreats done um done by uh soup with life is art productions and uh so booked them but uh, but like in in terms of bigger things locked in artist catering working on i shouldn't even say i won't say things that are almost confirmed but pretty yeah, awesome only do the stuff. confirmies Pretty awesome stuff that's almost confirmed, but got that confirmed, got like uh, medical confirmed. I know that's boring if you're outside of it, but it's fun for us to have uh, <laughs> checked up, checked off like, OK, we got all of the adult things in place. Yeah, we have festival. one first aid kit. It's got a <laughs> band aid. It's got some hydrogen peroxide has a well, Q tip it is and a popsicle stick for your tongue because it's actually bear care is the medical staff that does it it's the medical team that um that does a lot of the grateful dead shows as well and they you know the they stay busy there stuff. yeah you know they're and, they're no strangers to blood transfusions and <laughs> pupil undilation and whatever other well i guess uh, grateful dead is probably uh, mainly psychedelic uh, use there's probably not too much um, I mean, it's a lot of, you know what it is. It's a lot of dehydration. It's a lot of people not drinking, not drinking enough water, being getting mm. fucking baked in the sun and forgetting to drink enough water. And then like someone has too much yeah. beer, gets baked in the sun. They're at Grateful Dead. This is like the moment they've been waiting for, um, for however long they drink too much. And they're like sunburn and everything else. Then they eat mushrooms and they're like dehydrated. 
on mushrooms and it interacts with the brain in a weird way and now they think they're god or something like that and they gotta like which we all are but not in the way you <laughs> not, think right not, then not in the way that person is at that moment puny god right then <laughs> yeah um and yeah so so like that's that's the uh that's the sort of stuff that would have happen at uh grateful Dead, but also we're like you know we have a fucking science area and stuff like that like we, we're our gonna people are gonna fun. be too healthy we're gonna have to get yeah. them to come inject cigarettes in you because you drank just <laughs> yeah. the right amount of water yeah yeah I you're gonna get to, an... we have a we have a we have a brochure that we just finished because people were like we're I got a lot of messages, people saying like, I don't know how to explain this properly to a friend. So now I just have a brochure that you can print off on a regular piece of paper uh, that Ramin just finished and hand to somebody um, and that I can pass out after shows if I start doing stand up anytime soon, um, which I'm probably going to around the area. Ramin's going to update the website. And then after that, things are going to start taking off. Um, so if you go to the website, there'll be, um, updated rental of camping gear, uh, info through a, a few different services for glamping or regular tent stuff. And then, um, there's, uh, several other updates like that, but there's, again, it's hard to keep track of what I can tell people and what I can't. Cause I already was sending Ramin pictures today of some stuff that I put together that I'm so excited for, uh, that we can't, share, <laughs> that we can't share with you guys, but we got, uh, all have will a be revealed of, in time. All will be revealed in time. The thing's really coming along and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm frankly, you know, still nervous just because I, I think, um, you know, for, for, to get the number of people that I want to have to make the place feel good may or may not be a lot of work. And I, d I don't have an idea of how much work it'll be, but I've talked with people that have done similar events about like the number that we've sold and stuff so far. And I guess it's like a pretty damn good number for the event that we have right now. So I'm excited and I want to encourage people to hurry up and snag up the rest of those two easy 222 early bird tickets because we have a awesome gift bag and stuff like that that comes with it. And there's going to be lots more updates soon, including, oh, flow art. We, we have a flow art troupe that we just confirmed. So I know there's flow artists and stuff in our community. But this will be a dedicated like five different things with five different people like poi, hula hoop, bow, like one other. representing each sense. There's going to be a smell person, a sight person, <laughs> a hearing person, a taste person, and a um, uh, hair more, person. <laughs> hair person, yeah. It's hair. Hair is the fifth sense. <laughs> Oh, did I? Uh, I tried to say hear. Hearing, oh, sight, hear. smell, <laughs> touch, taste. There we go. Yeah. Uh, there's, that's up in the air if there's really five senses anyway. I um, think there's a bit more. But there's... Really? Um, like seeing dead people and <laughs> feeling like there's something going on? We'll talk about it in another episode, maybe. Um, but there's five like main ones. Five legit ones. Hmm. I know there's 23, like, the feeling of being watched. Or that feeling where you hear a song you haven't heard in a long time and the hair stands up on your arms. I don't know. Yeah. I want to go to court with this. I feel like it's just scientists trying to trying to make a name for themselves. Yeah, yeah. Adding another, adding another sense. Yeah. You yeah, think? it's kind of like, remember when we talked about the simple machines and like all simple machines break down into an inclined plane? Uh, yeah, yeah. Instead of there you just think, being... You think it's like that? 
Yeah, which I wanted to say one thing about physics really quick, if we haven't sure. touched on this and how, so your fascination is with evolutionary biology above all the other yeah. branches of science. And someone might make the argument that like, well, chemistry is more fundamental or, you know, physics is the ultimate sure. fundamental science, but it's not be because be, it, it's not more fundamental because at the end of the day, you are still a biological being that's gotten here through evolution like trying to figure out the physics but the machine you're doing it through is always the evolutionary biology mm -hmm. machine you can never escape the evolutionary biology machine even though you think you're doing physics or mathematics you're still that thing so that is the most oh, yeah. fundamental thing i think you so could, uh, i mean i always loved research. math and physics was my first love but evolutionary biology is like that's the stuff that's where all yeah, so in a way it is the most fundamental held. of all of them in my opinion evolution's where it's at um i'll give you the five senses but anyhow <laughs> what what i'm excited about these flow artists is is not only is it like awesome people to you know be providing like a you know awesome light and dance and stuff well well music's going on and live painting and stuff is going on but I I confirmed them because they're gonna also be doing some workshops in the well wellness area and stuff too. So you can get some hula hoop lessons, some poi lessons. If you wanna, I'm I'm thinking I might start turning into a poi boy again. I'm thinking uh I have my I have my poi. Uh, I might in, become a hula fula. My hula needs a lot of work. Yeah, have you uh, have you hula hooped? Yeah, it's not good. It's you can keep it going weird. for a little bit, but it's it, there's no like flow to it. It's like I'm it's all I can do it. is get it to not fall down. I've well, got friends that can ones. walk with it, and they were yeah. like one friend in particular. She was born with the ability to do it. She yeah. can walk around like she doesn't even have one, and it's still just just going. Oh yeah, I can't do it at all. Um. So yeah, so that was another thing that we just uh, that we just confirmed. So it's gonna be awesome. I'm so happy that I'm here in Raleigh putting this together because I'm taking meetings with a bunch of people and everything's just really clicking into place. In a hurry, please support the show. Check out our bonus stuff on Patreon. Um, and uh, that's uh. uh and if you can write us a review, that's helpful as well. Uh, let us know what kind of nature and wildlife stuff you guys are into in the comments section. Because uh, maybe it's something that I already know a little bit about and would like to explore further. Maybe it's something we could do an episode about. Uh, pro tip, if you want me to talk about it, fuck do I not know anything about botany. And uh, so that's <laughs> going to be tough sledding and uh and uh, no good for anybody but uh i know a lot of it is green lot, but not all of it yeah a lot of mammals uh stuff like that throw out a species that you want to hear about maybe i'll dig into it do a little, little work and uh and we'll start doing some more episodes like this because this is a fun little kind of experimental i love talking about the big concepts of driving forces evolutionary biology and stuff but it's kind of cool just to focus in on one species and use it as sort of a case study for a lot of the ideas that we talk about uh, in this show and tie everything together. So and we love animals as and people. we love them. So until next time, keep on salivating honeys. <laughs>